All right, today we're looking at solving factorable polynomials. So this is probably where things get new for you. Uh, the previous couple of lessons, I know they were large, but it's mainly review to be per perfectly honest. Today you get to see some newer stuff. Uh, and it's applying skills that you've been using over the past couple of days. So what's the goal? I can apply my knowledge of factoring, so that's what you've been doing, to polynomial equations. Polynomial equations that are factorable in order to solve them. All right, so what are we looking at? And you see the first example in front of you. What's the major difference? We have a fourth power. Okay, we haven't had to deal with anything above a square before. So what are some of the key features here? When you look at it, there's only three terms. Okay, so can't common factor. There's not an x in every term. 11 and 18 won't have anything in common. Um, it's not a difference of squares. Can't take the square root of 18, so it's not a perfect square. But it kind of looks like a simple trinomial, except for this exponent 4. So I'm going to teach you a strategy to deal with factoring polynomials. So if you'll notice the polynomial here, we have an exponent of 4, we have an exponent of 2, and then we have no x term. So that means that our exponents are increasing by 2 on the x's. If you have a case like that, we can factor. I'm going to show you two strategies. You pick the one that makes the most sense for you. All right? So strategy number one. You're going to say let, uh, let A equal X squared. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to solve or replace everything in the original formula with an A term. So now... I need to break that original equation into x squareds, okay? So breaking it into x squareds, I already have an x squared here, so I don't have to change it. This I have to rewrite with an x squared. So what is x to the fourth? x to the fourth is really x squared squared. So I'm using the power of powers. I'm going backwards through the power of powers. Minus 11, and I'm going to put x squared in brackets here, plus 18 equals 0. Everywhere there's an x squared, I'm going to replace it with an a because that's what I'm going to that's what the whole point of this process is. So doing that, I end up with a squared minus 11a plus 18 equals 0. So now, I can so use simple uh, factoring simple trinomial here now because it's something I'm comfortable with. So we have the two brackets. So I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply to 18. So it's going to multiply to 18 and add to negative 11. So 1 times 18, 2 times 9. There's the answer right there. Negative 2 take away 9. So I'll have a minus 2 and a minus 9. And that's equal to 0. All right. And then we do replace a with x squared. So now I return back to the previous notation. And x squared minus 9 equals 0. And now I have two individual brackets that I'm trying to find a solution for. So using the strategy we talked about earlier, I can let one bracket set it equal to 0. So x squared minus 2 equals 0. And the other bracket, because that is when the solution occurs. It's when each bracket is set equal to 0. I go ahead and solve. So I'll start with this one. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So x squared equals 2. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I end up with x equals plus or minus root 2. And you can report it as a decimal with this course. There's nothing wrong with that. Doing the same on the other side. Plus 9, plus 9. So we get x squared equals 9. Take the square root of both sides. Remember, when you take the square root, you end up with two possible solutions. It could be positive or it could be a negative. So it's equal to plus or minus 3. So therefore x would equal, and there's technically four solutions, and I'll write them all out. Positive root 2, negative root 2, 3, 
and negative 3. All right. So there's one possible solution. All right. The other uh, solution that I referred to is uh, if you're comfortable jumping and doing without doing the substitution, basically. So method number two, which I'll do over here. So I'm just going to rewrite the question again. Okay. Some people are going to be comfortable with this, and they're going to say to themselves, okay, when we do a simple trinomial, the first term in the brackets, when they multiply together, when we FOIL, I'll erase this, what times what will give us x to the fourth is the question you're asking yourself. And the answer is x squared times x squared. So this is a much, much quicker method. All right, so x squared times x squared will give you x to the fourth. Now you go ahead and do the process and you can jump straight to your minus 2 and minus 9. So it saves a lot of steps when you compare it to the other process. However, the tough part is to wrap your mind around. It's going to be instead of x and x, it's going to be x squared and x squared. So we already know the solution from the previous one will be positive root 2, negative root 2, 3, and negative 3. All right. So we'll try another example with that. Now, you go through your process again. They're going to be factorable, the homework and on a test. So you know you're going to have to factor. So when you go to factor this, you have to ask yourself, what type of factor am I dealing with? Again, 5 and a 4. So that means that common factoring is not going to work. There's three terms, so it's not a difference of squares. Is it a perfect square? I can't take the square root of 6, so that's out. Is this a simple trinomial? No, because of this silly 6. So that means it has to be a complex trinomial. So, again, what you need to wrap your head around is that you're going to end up with an x squared term because it's fourth and then squared. All right, so they go up by 2. So you're going to end up with an x squared here eventually and an x squared here. So I'm going to ignore the x's for a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and factor it as if it was just a complex trinomial. So the factors of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3, that's it. I'll rewrite it. Factors of 4, 1 and 4, 2 and 2. So now I need to find the correct answer, something that gives me a 5. So when I look at those two, 4 and 6, that won't give me a 5. 2 and 3, or sorry, cross the 2 and 3 over. So that gives me 8 and 3. Well, that might work, because if I have an 8 and a 3, can I be, have it as a negative 5? I need to have a negative 8 and a positive 3, so that will definitely work. So that means that my bracket will have, those guys are going to be in the same bracket, and those guys are going to be in the same bracket. I know there's going to be an x squared instead of an x, though, because we're dealing with x to the fourth. So it's going to be 2x squared and a 1. It's going to be a 3x squared and a 4. The two numbers that multiply to negative 8 have to be a negative value. So when I go to look here, I know I'm going to have 2 times 4 when I do the FOIL or distributive law. That's the one that has to be the negative. So I make it negative, I make that positive. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's your first stage. Now you still have squares. So the only way to finish this question now is to take each bracket and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So I want to know when will that bracket equal 0. And I want to know when this bracket will equal 0. So as I go ahead and solve, subtract 1 from both sides. So I have 2x squared equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 2. I get x squared equals negative 1 half. Take the square root of both sides. x equals the square root of negative 1 half. Okay. I'm going to accept no solution here. Right, because we cannot take the square root of negative numbers. So that tells me that that first bracket, 
there is no possible combination or no value of x that will make it zero. So there's no solution. So we check to see, will the other bracket give us a solution? So we'll add 4 to both sides, and we end up with 3x squared equals 4. Divide both sides by 3. x squared equals 4 thirds. Take the square root of both sides. x equals plus or minus, and if you use the calculator, you have decimals, so that's fine plus or minus four-thirds. So therefore, there's only two possible solutions for this question. It's either the square root of four-thirds or the negative square root of four-thirds. So even though there was potential for four answers, there is only two possible solutions here. All right. And do I have time for one more? Uh, I think I'll cut it off at this point, and we'll pick it up in the next video.